really windy. I hope you can hear me. If you would have seen my last video, you would have seen that my mom actually lives in Mexico. She moved here just a year and a half ago. Like I'm not born and raised in Mexico, even though I am a quarter Mexican. I decided to come down this year for the Dia de los Muertos, which if you do not know, is the day of the dead. And so in Mexican culture, they celebrate Dia de los Muertos, which is when your ancestors who have passed, they are able to walk across a path of these golden flowers and Cool. But families go to the cemeteries and decorate their graves and leave out offerings. We make an ofrienda, almost like a shrine where you put pictures of your family members who have passed on and you leave out like sugar schools and you leave salt because it's supposed to ward off the bad spirit. But I'm really excited to be here. I wanted to make a video and just kind of show you guys like a little bit of my experience down here. Feliz Dia de los Muertos. Welcome to Mexico. And I'm excited to show you guys around. do I have a treat for you. My grandma Abuelita, which directly translates into grandma little grandma. My grandma Abuelita lived with us and although she taught me literally no Spanish, she did always cook for us. I loved her food. Her food was always what me and my brother were the most excited to eat all the time. She would make arroz con pollo, which is rice with chicken. But arroz con pollo is the meal that reminds me the most of my childhood probably. Oh, you changed. I had to. I was explaining. Arroz con pollo is like, if I'm talking about my Mexican side, that is definitely like the meal that reminds me the my most mother. of my childhood. And I didn't get to learn anything from grandma because when she was young and cooking a lot, I was kind of too young. And then by the time that I was old enough to learn how to cook, she was too old to cook. So our timing did not match up. It's like a rice dish with big pieces of chicken and it's all cooked in tomatoes. With the flavor that is very typical of my mother, which is really just onions, garlic and tomato. That's how I remember all of her food. I knew when I was coming down here and I was talking to my mom about all the different things that we could do together. She said that she wanted to have her friend come over and we could do a cooking class together. And I was like, heck yeah, love to cook, let's do it. And she was naming off all these things that I could learn how to cook. But then I remembered arroz con pollo and it's so good. And I knew it would be decently easy so I'd be able to make it at home. I'm getting really excited because we've already made it and it's like on the stove and it's done and it's so good. And it reminds me so much of my grandma. So I'm really, really impressed. I'm excited to show you guys how to make it. There's something lovely about that, that it's not just comfort food, it's food, flavor, and smell that just kind of brings you back to a point in time with memories, and it's wonderful. And it's great to have my daughter here. Oh, let's teach him how to cook. All right. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is mi amiga Lorena. Y Lorena es mi maestra de cocina mexicana. No. Sí? ¿Está bien? Gracias. Gracias. Estoy muy feliz de estar con ustedes. Oh, también. Los quiero mucho. Igualmente. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out how many servings you wanna make and then do one handful of rice per serving for your recipe. This recipe is really eyeballing a lot of it, so just roll with me. Then you're gonna heat a pan over medium to high heat and cover it in oil. She used spray oil and then also did a spoonful of oil and then stirred it all around the pan. You wanna make sure your entire pan is covered. Rinse out your rice so it runs clear and then add your rice to the pan. 
Once the rice is added to the pan, you're gonna start to stir the rice. You are going to be stirring this rice for so long, so just get ready for it. Turn the temperature on the heat down just a little bit and then continue stirring the rice. You're gonna be stirring the rice until it turns like goldeny brown. In the meantime, go ahead and chop up one onion and two to three carrots. You want these diced pretty small because you don't wanna have big chunks once you add them to the rice dish. Keep stirring that rice. You can chop and stir at the same time, I believe in you. And then add the onion to the pan. You're gonna to wanna to keep the onion separate from the rice at first and just stir the onion around a little bit until it gets a little bit translucent and then go ahead and mix it together and continue stirring that rice. In the meantime, you are going to chop up three tomatoes and just put those to the side in a separate bowl. See my t-shirt? Oh yeah, I see your t-shirt. How's the chopping going? The chopping is perfecto. You'll also chop up three cloves of garlic and keep stirring that rice. Add your garlic to the pan. We used a garlic press. If you don't have one, just go ahead and chop it really finely, but add that in there and then add the carrots to the pan. Now you're gonna stir all of this around for a long time. It should start smelling pretty fragrant of the onions and the garlic now, but you wanna keep stirring it and make sure that those carrots get a little soft. Then add the tomatoes to the pan and look at how she's mushing them. You wanna squish the tomatoes down with your spoon and then you're gonna mix it all together with the rice as well. Continue stirring and then you're going to add, she used water here, but I actually recommend using broth, like a chicken broth or a vegetable broth, just something to add a little bit more flavor, but you want it to be enough water Water that it covers the top of the rice. Then stir that around, make sure it's really well mixed together. And here she used a tomato bouillon cube. I actually have not seen these in the States. If you can find them, awesome. If you can't, go ahead and use tomato paste and stir that. If you do use tomato paste, you'll have to stir it really well. Let that simmer and in a separate pan, you're going to add some oil and then chop up half an onion and two cloves of garlic. You want these really fine as well. You could use a garlic press again, but just make sure that they are very small pieces. Add your onion and garlic to the pan. Be careful you don't burn yourself because it does have that oil in it but you're gonna stir that around for a long time. Once your rice has soaked in all of the water or broth, go ahead and turn off that heat and cover the rice with a lid. In the meantime, keep stirring your onion and garlic until it's fragrant and then add your chicken. We use chicken breast and chicken thighs, but you can use whatever part of the chicken you like. If you like wings or drumsticks, whatever it is, feel free to use it. This is just what we got. Then you're gonna to wanna to stir and mix that chicken around so that way the onion and garlic doesn't burn on the bottom. So keep stirring it around. We actually had way too much chicken for this tiny pan, so we transferred it into a pot and then continued cooking it in there. You're gonna to wanna to put a lid on your chicken and let it steam in there and that will keep your chicken very, very moist. Who's good at multitasking we are? Now it's time to make guacamole. So you're gonna chop up half an onion, one jalapeno and a handful of cilantro and add that to a bowl. Make all of this pretty decently fine. Also chop up two to three tomatoes and add those to the bowl as well. That depends on how much tomato you want your guac and mix it all around. Also cut two limes in half and then put the juice from those limes into the mixture that you have so far. We have one of those lime juicer press things, but if you don't have one of those, be very careful and make sure you don't get any seeds in your batch. There's nothing worse than biting into a seed when you're just trying to have a delicious bite of guacamole. Add some salt to taste. We are salty ladies, so we like a lot. And then add two avocados. Now notice she's just cut the avocados like into little squares. She did not mash the avocados yet. Once you add it into the bowl, that's when you mash it. This is not gonna be your restaurant style, very, very smooth guacamole. We're teaching you how to make the authentic real stuff. And trust me, it is so good. Give it a whirl. And then go ahead and plate it and add some tortilla chips and enjoy because you know that bad boy tastes so good. 10 out of 10 recommend. All right, back to the arroz con pollo. So you are going to add your cooked rice mixture with all the tomatoes and garlic and onions and carrots into the pot. This is why you actually do really need a pot. And then move it around and you want the chicken to kind of be at the top and the rice to kind of move down, but you wanna add one even layer. Lower that heat and I actually recommend taking the lid off at this point and letting it simmer out. Let it continue cooking until that rice has soaked in all of that water and there's no soupiness left. And enjoy, and I hope you love this dish as much as I do. Buen provecho. What does that mean? Bon appetit. Viva Mexico. Audio Jungle.